There's a feature on YouTube that allows you to test multiple thumbnails against each other to find the best performing thumbnail for your specific video. And this is what's used in marketing to put two different things in front of someone and you get to see which item gets clicked more. And so for YouTube thumbnails, this is super useful because you can have multiple images as your thumbnails, and then as the video is being shown across YouTube, these three thumbnails are automatically being tested against each other to find a clear winner and the one that gains the most amount of watch time. Now, in this video, I'm gonna dig into everything about this feature, how it works, how the winner is chosen, and some best practices when it comes to creating thumbnails and using this test and compare to try some different ideas that will get you more views on your videos. Now, this is a super cool feature and it's been in beta for a long time. I've actually had access to it and I've been using it on all of my videos since YouTube turned it on in my back end. However, now YouTube has rolled this out to everyone. And so the creators that are gonna have access to this YouTube test to compare are those of you that have access to the advanced features. So if you don't have access to your advanced features yet, you need to go into your backend, go to your settings, and make sure that you qualify for these advanced features. Then this YouTube test and compare feature will be available to you. So let's dig into how this feature works. So you have the ability to test three different thumbnails against each other and YouTube's going to do this all automatically. So there's two places to where you can turn on this test and compare. The first is when you're uploading a video. So underneath your thumbnail section, you'll have three different buttons here. You'll have your normal upload file, you'll have auto generated, and now you have this test and compare. And when you click test and compare, it's going to pop up with this screen and you have three different options. Now these are where you can upload three different thumbnails. It says upload up to three images to learn which one the viewers prefer. And there's this little question mark icon that gives you a little more insight. So you upload your images, see what best performs, wait for results up to two weeks. The viewers will see the winning thumbnail. And remember, it's up to you. You can always change this later. And then there's this learn more. So you don't always have to compare three thumbnails. You can do two side by side, but YouTube gives us the option to do ABC testing so that you can have three different options and it just gives you a little bit more to play around with to figure out what works best for your audience. Now, the other place that you could set up this test and compare is on a previous video where a thumbnail has already been uploaded. So if we go to this previous video, you could see here is my section for the thumbnail. I click the three dots in the upper right hand corner and you can see now I have change, download, auto generate. These were there before, but now you have this new option, which is test and compare. And you can click this. Now you can start adding new thumbnails. It's going to auto generate the thumbnail that was there before, but then also there's now these two other options. So you could take your older videos and start testing new thumbnail ideas on those videos. Or if you wanna scrap that original thumbnail, you could replace this first image and do a full new test between all three thumbnails. Now, if we go to a video where I already have done one of these test and compares, you could see that my options are a little bit different. You'll see view test report, upload file and auto generate. So I could swap out this thumbnail that's there with a new thumbnail, or I could view the results of the test. And so let's click this view test report. So with this test, I only did two thumbnails and you can see the results here and it's based on watch time. Now YouTube has determined that watch time is the best metric to select the winner of this test and compare results. And this is straight from YouTube. This is why they're using this metric as the guiding force. They say, why does test and compare only select winning thumbnails based on watch time? Why not other metrics like click-through rate? We want to make sure that your thumbnail and content gets the highest amount of viewer engagement. So we are optimizing for overall watch time share over other metrics. We believe that this metric is the best way to guide your content strategy decisions and support your chances of success on the platform. The tool is in its early stages and may expand to include more metrics in the future. So basically, YouTube is saying that the most important metric for determining a, a thumbnail's performance is ultimately watch time. If a viewer clicks in and ends up watching more of your content, then that means that's a good viewer for you. And that's a good click for that thumbnail. So it's going to reward the thumbnail that generates more people clicking in and generating more watch time. It makes sense because if you just get clicks, so if you have a really high click-through rate, but you have a really low watch time, well, that means that the thumbnail is not actually satisfying the viewer, and so that's not actually gonna help your channel. So the metric that this is all built around is the one that's actually gonna help you get more growth on your channel and reach the right viewer for your audience. Now, I know some of you will say that this tool is limiting because it's very automatic and it only 
adjust based on watch time. However, my experience working with this tool and using it on a ton of videos, I find that the fact that it is simplified makes it super easy to use and it doesn't stick you in analysis paralysis. If you were given a ton of data off of all of these thumbnails, you might sit there and overanalyze and not actually focus on what's most important, which is satisfying the viewer. And so YouTube has taken all of that out of the equation and given you this simplified way to look at three thumbnails against each other and finding the one that targets the specific viewer that's right for your video. So let's dig into what the data looks like when you actually do a test and compare. So first, what you're gonna see is the running time. The test finished, it ran from May 28th to June 11th. So it did the full two weeks for this thumbnail. And the reason for that is there was no clear winner. And you'll see that with the preferred tag right here. So preferred means that one thumbnail performed slightly better than the other, but it wasn't a clear determining factor. Both of these actually worked fine. So there wasn't a clear winner, so it just preferred the one that skewed slightly higher. And you can see that the watch time share metric is displayed by a percentage out of 100%. So this thumbnail got 52.9 out of 100%, and this thumbnail got 47.1. Now here's the results from a different video. This is one where I ran three different thumbnails against each other. And you can see that this one ran from April 2nd, to April 5th. So it only ran for a few days. And in that time, it found a clear winner with thumbnail two. This one got 36%, whereas thumbnail one got 32.1 and thumbnail three got 31.9. So YouTube is trying to find the thumbnail that's statistically much higher performer than the other two or other one. And you'll see when you do three thumbnails, it's gonna be in the 30s and 40s in terms of percentage. And then when you're doing two thumbnails, it's like 50-50. So it'll be, it'll be like 40 something and 50 something, unless you have a thumbnail that's performing much higher and then you're getting like a 30-70 split or something like that. Basically, it's always out of 100%. Now, what YouTube does is when it finds a clear winner, it automatically sets that thumbnail as the main thumbnail for the video. So you can see one of these videos took two weeks to determine the winner, and it didn't really determine a winner. It just found a preferred and chose that one. But over that two weeks, it was constantly rotating the two thumbnails back and forth. Whereas this video with the three different thumbnails, it rotated these three thumbnails over four days, and in that time, it found the winner and chose the winner and set that automatically. So there's no specific time frame of when this test is going to finish. It's based on a few different factors. One is if there's a clear winner out of the three or out of the two. And part of that is also depending on how many impressions your video is getting. So if your video is getting a low number of impressions, this test is gonna take a lot longer. If you're getting a high number of impressions, you're probably gonna see this test happen much faster and the results are gonna happen much faster. So there is a few factors at play and really is determined by the amount of people that are actually seeing that video pop up in their feed. And if that's giving YouTube enough data to be able to pick a significant winner. Now, if you've made it this far into the video, I just wanna say thanks. And also make sure you hit the subscribe button because I do a lot of education around filmmaking creators and this whole world of YouTube and trying to be successful on YouTube. Also make sure you head over to the creatorfilmschool.com, which is my full step-by-step -step roadmap on how to make a successful channel and the same things that I did to grow my channel to over a million subscribers. Now, at any time during this test, you can actually click this set button and it will set whatever thumbnail you have selected as the main thumbnail. Now, also, if you ever wanna redo this test, you can click new test down here and start over. Just note, if you do click this new test, you're gonna scrap the results of your old test. So in its current form with this test to compare, you'll wanna make sure that you save your results so you always have data to look back on on um, which thumbnails are working better for your audience, especially if you're testing multiple thumbnails on the same video. And so that brings us into the next section, which is, what we actually want to do with this test and compare. And so I kind of see it as two different stages of testing thumbnails. The first is testing three unique concepts. So having completely different thumbnails, trying to determine what style of thumbnail works best for the video. And the second way to approach it would be doing variations on a thumbnail that's already performing well. And so with this video here, which is seven lessons to be a better storyteller in video, I tested three completely different ideas. They have different colors, 
there's something different going on in each. The focus is a little bit different. And you can see that there's not a conclusive result. So this one didn't find one that performed better than the others. However, when you look at the percentages, definitely thumbnail one performed better than the other two. Now from here, I could do some more tweaking and try to test this again and find a clear winner. Now the second way to test this is just changing out elements. So with this video here, I'm testing three drones against each other and I have one clean with no text and then two with text. And one of them, I went from the cheapest to the most expensive and one from the most expensive to the cheapest. So I just flipped the drones around to see if one performed better than the other. And you can see that thumbnail two, which, which went from cheapest to most expensive, got the highest percentage with 38.1. So you can see that both of these, the highest performer got 38.1. So even though that other one said it wasn't conclusive, I'm looking at the data and I've seen that it, it is pretty conclusive that that was a clear winner. So the two ways that you want to approach your thumbnail test and compare is one, try some wildly different ideas and see if there's something that works better for your audience, whether it's a clean frame or a frame with a big face in it going, you know, adding some emotion, or if it's just like a product or something specific, try some different ideas and see what works. That's the whole point of this. And then when you find a thumbnail that's performing, you could do another test to see different variations of that thumbnail. Do a variation that has text in it that and one that doesn't have text in it. And then you could also change the background to make it not so distracting or make it a little bit busier. You'll actually start seeing what works in thumbnails much quicker when you're doing these tests and you're comparing thumbnails against each other. And then here's what I did that was a two thumbnail variation. I used the exact same thumbnail, but I just added text and that one became a clear winner. And so just doing minor tweaks might actually boost the viewership of your videos. And so now that this feature is available, you can go back and start testing old thumbnails and just doing minor tweaks to see if you can boost the level of viewership of those videos. Or you could try something wildly different and see if you're getting a much higher watch time for your audience based on a new thumbnail. You could breathe new life into old videos by using this method. Now let me share six rules that I use when I'm making my thumbnails. Number one is you wanna make sure that your thumbnail is gonna be what the viewer is gonna find in the video. So you're not tricking someone. They see the thumbnail and it's representation of what they're gonna get in the video. Number two is keep it clean and simple. So nothing distracting, not super busy, but keeping your elements separated and in a way that it's very clear what's going on in that thumbnail. Number three is using text is okay if you're not using a ton of text in the thumbnail. And also the text needs to add on to what's going on in the title. You don't want to repeat the title in the thumbnail itself. Number four is you want to convey some sort of emotion or feeling in your thumbnail that the viewer is going to get out of the video. Number five is you want to create contrast so that the thumbnail pops whatever the viewer is looking at it, whether they're on their phone or on the computer. Now, the other way I look at contrast is I want my thumbnail to pop out different than every other thumbnail in the results that pop up for that same video. I wanna have contrast where my thumbnail looks different than all of the other creators. And so mine stands out. And number six is using the rule of three. So three items or less in your thumbnail to make it simple and easy to understand if someone's just browsing around and they glance at your thumbnail. And if you want more ideas on how to create thumbnails that are gonna get clicks, make sure you check out this video right here, which goes really in depth around how to create thumbnails that actually reach the viewers that you're trying to reach. I'll see you over there.